Hi there. Welcome to this build of a 65 inch wingspan Great Plains Trainer 60. Now in this video we're going to get the wings covered and that's the last bit of covering before we start fitting out the, the plane itself. You can see the fuselage hanging up here which I covered in the last video. Also in the last video I talked about the tools and the equipment I was going to be using so I'm not going to mention that in this video there's no point in repeating myself if you want to know about my iron and the, what I use for cutting and all that kind of stuff have a look at the previous video where I'm covering the fuselage and you'll find a link to that in the description below this video now I'm going to be covering this with a product called Easy Coat and I've just realized it's still under my bench now I'm going to be using primarily three colours, red, white and blue, so matching what we've got on the fuselage. Now if you saw, if you saw the last video you will realise that I really don't like easy coats, I'm finding it very unpleasant to use and as I've said in the previous video I'm not going to be using it again but I bought it for this I started and so I'm sticking with it and we'll get it covered but it's not a product I particularly like uh, primarily it doesn't stretch at all and the film is a clear film with a coloured kind of glue from what I can ascertain and the glue squeezes out when you do the seams, goes all over your iron, all over the colour next to it and it's very difficult to remove. So I, I talked about this more in my previous video with the fuselage so I'm not going to say any more and I'm going to try and get the wing finished today using this <laughs> easy coat which is anything but easy. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing the underside in just the plain red and I'm going to be doing that first and I'm going to be lapping that up into the aileron bay and just around to probably the front of the leading edge. I'm then going to be using a combination of all three colours on the top surface and that again will overlap around in the aileron bay and on the front where the ball nose is, I'm going to take it round and just down so it disappears under that ball nose and that will give me about a one centimetre, half inch, something like that overlap. Now I've drawn out the colour scheme that I'm going to have for the top. Um, <clears throat> I did this before I'd started using the Easy Coat and I've actually revised it, the white strip in the middle is going to be different but I'll zoom in and we'll have a quick look at that now, it's a little bit faint so if it's difficult to see I apologise. Yeah. We've got the wing, we've got the centre line and the fuselage goes through there and here we have the wing tip. Now originally I was going to have a blue tapered section from the fuselage coming up and along the front of the wing. I was going to have white and then red at the bottom here. Hopefully you can see this, I know it's quite faint, but because of the issues I'm having with the film I've decided that the white, which is really thin and doesn't look very good at all, is going to play a much more minor part. I think I'm going to have this blue section, I'm then going to have a red section and I will probably just have a narrow white band over the join. That may change a little bit, we'll see how we get on doing that red on the underside and then we'll get to the top. I'm actually going to, one of the benefits of drawing this out full size is that I'm actually going to use these as a template. So I'll get it on the bench, cut out the two pieces or it would have been three and then I will use those as a template and using, I've got a metre rule here and I can cut that nicely and then with adding on about 10, 15 mil for an overlap. Okay, well I've got my red cut now for the underside 
and I'm going to take that up to just beyond the centre line, probably about half an inch, 12 mil, something like that overlap, so that we get a, a, a good seal, or a good join, should I say, between the, uh, the two pieces. And we'll have an overlap at the back, but on the front edge here, I want just enough so that it comes round to that bull nose. I don't want to trim it. So I'm going to try and line that up as best I can to start with. And I think probably tack it in the middle here and get that tacked right where it needs to be on that leading edge. I will probably tack it on the trailing edge then. Just pull that. I'll probably do it opposite a, um, a rib. So just pull that tack it there and then I will probably go to either side and tack it and then I will work on this front edge to get this front edge just right and then we can deal with the rest of it. One of the problems with this easy coat is it gets really ugly if you uh, get it wrong and then try to lift it up you have to get it right first time. Films I've used in the past you could, if it wasn't quite right, you could just lift it up and do it again. But this is very unforgiving. Got the um, step down here where we've got the mounting, so I'll need to trim that around that fairly early on. So, just waiting for my iron to stabilise on the right temperature. I'm using as low a temperature as I can possibly use to stick this because I don't want any shrinkage to start off with. I've now got this... Uh, right hand side of the wing underside covered uh, or at least it's all stuck down I thought I was recording it but for some reason um, it wasn't it hasn't recorded properly so what I will do is I'm going to uh, record me putting on the left hand side and so you can uh, you can see that so uh, like I said I didn't realize this wasn't recording but what I've done is I've, I've stuck it down you can see it's all very loose I, this end is going to have black on it, but I've, I've done as best as I can to do it in one piece and I'm going to see how it shrinks. Just out of interest really, I could have just cut it around there and it would be a lot easier, but I quite fancy seeing how it goes. Now you can see, hopefully, that's, there's some quite good wrinkles and bags in that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bump the temperature up on the iron. I put this on with it about 105 degrees C, something like that. But now I'm going to put it up to about a 120 and that will start to shrink it. It won't shrink it massively, hopefully. Um, I, I can put it up to, you know, 150, 200, but I, I want to just gently increase the heat and go along and take out some of the wrinkles. I think I'm going to try it with the iron rather than the um, hot air gun. I, the hot air gun I find, it's, you can go overboard sometimes. It, it doesn't look like it's doing something and the next minute you know you've, you've got it too hot. So I'm going to try doing it, like I say, with the iron. This has actually gone on really well, uh, as good as any other film that, that I've used, but I haven't had to bend it round a corner and you're still getting a little bit of the, the colour coming out. I don't know where, whether that shows. But uh, we'll see how we get on shrinking it. And uh, temperature's going up, so I'm just going to start to uh, to do that now. If I perhaps prop this up a little bit, I don't know whether the light's better.
Right, well that's shrunk. Lovely. I'm quite pleased with that. And that is slightly redeeming for this uh, this cover because up till now I haven't been pleased with anything particularly. But I, I used the iron on about 125 and that was enough just very very slowly to tension it and, uh, and it shrunk lovely. You can see at the end I've had to cut that off and you can see the sticky residue that it, it leaves when you uh, when you peel film off. So, but anyway I'm going to bring the blue onto that and then I've got a black tip somewhere I've already cut something like this that will just go on the end so that that that's fine that's not a problem at all so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut the piece for the other side and I will get this covered and this time hopefully I will film it as I say I thought I was last time but um, but I don't know what went wrong the first thing we need to do when we're covering it is just do these corners. So I'm just going to put some little bits in those corners uh, there and also on the aileron bay here. And then when we trim the cover and fold it into there we don't end up with a little bit of a gap and also having to kind of patchwork it here. So I'm going to do that first and then I'll get it covered. Right, well I've now got this second piece on, on the uh, left hand side of the wing and it's just, it's tacked along that front edge nicely. I've done the, the corners and the, the wing tip and it's nicely secure in the aileron bay. Now I haven't tried shrinking it yet, the whole point of this is to get it on fairly square and even Yes, there's a few wrinkles, that's fine, they'll soon come out once I put some heat on it. So to put it on nice and even, and to actually hold, make sure it's secure on all of the edges, so that when I actually start to shrink it, it's not moving along the edges, it's just tightening it up in the middle. Right, well I've now got the underside completed. It's covered and uh, all, all shrunk. I may put the odd white stripe on or something but I'll cover the whole thing first and then I'll think about whether I'm going to add something. I probably won't to be honest. And actually considering what I think about this film it's gone on okay but only because I think I've got these square edges to the wings, a square profile. I haven't got a round wing that I'm trying to stretch it over. I think if I had I would be pulling my hair out by now in despair, but it, it, it's, I'm quite pleased with what I've got. But you can't get around the issue that I'm still getting lots of the glue coming out onto the iron. It's only one colour so it doesn't show if it goes onto the film. And also, I don't know whether I've mentioned this, I certainly mentioned it in the previous video on the fuselage. When you shrink the covering, and I've only used the iron, I haven't used the hot air gun, it, you lose the colour. I, I don't know why. You can see on the ribs you've got the dark colour, it's nice. And then on the back here where it's been on the solid surface and it's shrunk, it kind of starts to break up the colour and, and you can see through it a little bit. I don't know 
whether this shows up on the camera or not. But it's just one of those things to live with with this covering. I think in future I'll use the rest of the covering I've got, but I'll probably use it just on combat wings or something. Something like that where actually I don't care what it looks like. Right, well, that's the bottom done. I now need to start thinking about this top surface. So I'm going to use my templates and cut out some film and then, uh, and then see how we get on with the covering. <laughs> Right, well, I'm now preparing the panel for the right hand wing, so we've got the fuselage and this comes up from the fuselage the blue. And what I've done is I've used the paper templates that I cut out to do those two pieces and in addition to the, paper, the, the size of the template I've added an overlap of 20, about 22 mil. So I wanted to make sure it was large enough. So what's that? That's uh, seven eighths. I wanted to make sure that was large enough to get a good stick between them, because I've experimented with this a little bit, and if you get it too hot on the shrinking, it's going to pull apart, and you get that horrible sticky residue, which you can't do anything with. So I've given it a good overlap. Now, I may well put a piece of trim on here, black or white. I don't like using the white, it just doesn't cover, go, it doesn't look very good. So, but I'll see. I'm going to do the red first and then if it pulls apart and it's a bit sticky and doesn't look good, I will put the trim on. Now, I haven't taken off the backing film yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stick these two pieces together before I actually put them onto the uh, onto the wing. So I'm just going to do this seam very carefully with the iron. Now to do that I'm going to leave the backing on the red, I'm going to take the backing off the blue and I've got a piece of toughened glass which is actually just um, a shelf out of a, a fridge and I'm going to put that underneath where I'm heating and I'm going to heat it, stick it down and then I'll move it along, stick it down. Now if the backing's still on here it's not going to stick to the table. It may make the backing slightly harder to remove on the seam but hopefully that will be okay. On the glass it may stick a little bit on the glass but if the glass is nice and clean, it should come off easily enough. Right, well, I've now got that stuck down. There's a few little air bubbles. Where they've been big, I've just pricked them with a pin just to get the air out, just gently. Um, the smaller ones I've left because unless the actual light is shining on it in a certain direction, you can't see. And this film isn't the best film, as I've, as I've said. But anyway, it's stuck down nicely and it didn't stick to the glass. You can see I removed just the backing film where the join was going to be. Try and keep this, uh, this clean as much as I can. Now I, I worked from one end. I had the coolest iron I could use to make it stick because I didn't want to shrink it and it hasn't shrunk at all. And I, moving from one end like this, it helps squeeze the air out. So I'm going to go and get the wing now. We'll put this on and see if we can uh, get, it, uh, get it covered.
Right, well I've now got this more or less finished. I've got it shrunk and tight, stuck down along the leading edge, around the wing tip, and along this back edge, more or less, down the centre. I've also gone down on the cap strips where the, um, the join is to make sure that it's stuck there as well as possible. I now need to shrink the, uh, the bit in the middle here and I've left that till last because I want to make sure everything's tight and then do this as gently as possible because I don't want this pulling apart and um, exposing glue which I think it could well do. So I'm going to use it on a very light temperature and run over it as quick as possible. Still getting glue on the iron, I've got a little bit of red here which I'm not happy about. The, the red, the blue seems to be good but it doesn't show through but the red is quite transparent and you can see the balsa and as I've said before when you shrink it, don't know whether it shows up there but there's a, a bit of a, um, it kind of just shows the balsa through. You'll have seen me perhaps pricking the odd hole with a, a pin where you've got the epoxy on the, the fiberglass or where it overlaps and you get bubbles. If you want to get rid of those and they're biggish and connected to a wrinkle then you need to just very carefully pop them. Did have some wrinkles down here I thought I would never get rid of and there's still the odd one there I need to get rid of but I had to bump the iron up to about 155, really put the heat on to, uh, to shrink that. Like I say, at one point I thought I might never get rid of them. And uh, right, so I'm gonna get on now and uh, just start to shrink this and hopefully then we'll have this panel done. Right, well, I've now got this wing finished, or at least, sorry, I've got the uh, right hand side finished got the red underside and we've got the red and white on the top. Now it's gone on quite nicely. I'm quite pleased with the overall effect or the overall finish. There's a few little bubbles in the in the seam down the middle but to be honest I'm not going to try and do those because they hardly show or try and do anything about it with a pin or anything because I don't want to weaken that part of the uh, covering. I've still got the wing tip to do, which I'm going to do black. Now, this hasn't gone on too bad, to be honest. I have spread a little bit of the red glue onto the blue with that, the red glue onto the blue with that persistent problem of the glue getting on the iron. And I just, there was a bit I just didn't notice. So, and it won't come off, but it doesn't show really that much. I think I'm, as I've said before, I'm very lucky with this wingtip being quite a square, easy do. If it had been a curved wingtip, I'd have never managed with this film. But anyway, I'm going to take a break now, and then I'm going to come back and do this side. As it stands, I don't think I'm going to put any trim on here. Uh, certainly not a line like I was thinking, unless this side does go a little bit wonky and... Um, and the glue bleeds out a little bit and I need to sort of neaten it up. But I, I quite like that as it is for the moment. So I'm going to take a break and then I'm going to get this side finished and we'll come back and have a look when the whole thing's done and dusted. Right, well as you can see I've now got the wings finished and I'm really, really relieved. And actually, despite my misgivings over my, or my feelings about this, this covering, I'm actually quite pleased with how it's turned out. Particularly this seam, I think having the half inch or 22, no, 7 eighths or 22 mil overlap, I think was a really good bet because it gave a good strong joint. And there isn't any evidence that this joint has pulled apart when I did the shrinking. It stayed nice and straight, no glue has, has seeped out, which it would do as it pulls apart and I don't know whether that shows but the actual line going through the whole wing itself of the blue is, uh, is nice and straight so that's brilliant. I'm not going to put any white trim on it looks nice as it is the white I think is quite nasty so I don't really want to mess with it now I'm just going to leave it like that and 
the blue comes down nice and just meets into the beef blue fuselage lovely you'll see that in a later video but uh, but it, it is it's nice I've cut the holes for the uh, wire access and the servos now all that is left for me to do with this is to cover the ailerons but before I do that I want to reacquaint myself with the um, the hinge holes along this back edge so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the holes in and I'm just going to lightly put the hinges in I'm not going to glue them in I'm not going to push them in yet I'll do that at a later stage and what I'm going to do rather than just going along with a scalpel and sort of cutting a hole which could end up a little bit jagged and might if this stretches it might split I'm going to use a fairly fine point soldering iron going to get it nice and hot and then I'm just going to burn or melt a hole where the hinge goes and that will be a lot neater and a lot smoother than trying to cut a round hole with a, a scalpel so I'll do that now and then I think we've got the covering finished but I'll come back in, uh, in just a few minutes or, or a bit longer when I've covered these right well it's done it's all covered and finished and I am so relieved to get that done and uh, ailerons here there's another one somewhere yeah there's another one somewhere and I've used a soldering iron to put holes in ready for the robot hinges in the uh, in the covering probably don't show it from this distance but it's a real relief to get this done because as you know it's been a bit of a trial using this easy coat something I hadn't used before as I said earlier uh, the wings aren't on so they might be, not be lined up exactly but you can see how that blue comes from the wings now down into the fuselage so I'm going to draw this video to a close now and the next video is going to be fitting the control surfaces getting the servos in getting them operating setting up the throws engine in everything we need to do before we take it off to the airfield so thanks very much for watching I hope you found that useful informative so hopefully you'll come back and see how we get on in the next video fitting out this great planes trainer 60